Hi folks, welcome to a very special edition of Diplomacy Academy. On Memorial Day weekend, David Hood held a virtual DixieCon, the first event of its kind at the scale at which it was held. Over 80 players from all around the world participated in two games of diplomacy, one in the morning, one in the evening. Siobhan Nolan, Brandon Fogel, and I participated in a live stream commentary of those games. In these special editions of Diplomacy Academy, I'm packaging those games together so you don't have to sit through the whole 11 hours of our stream to follow one game. Instead, you can go through the commentary game by game. Some games weren't finished by the time we stopped recording in the morning, and I had to drop out before all the games were finished in the evening. So enjoy, welcome to some very special guests who joined the broadcast, and as always, uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. I'm Chris Martin, and I'll stab you soon. Fort San Juan, 1D. In Austria, we've got George Zhang, who is uh, from Chicago, and he's a younger player, uh, just, I think, uh, 20 or 21 at this point. England, uh, Claude Worrell. France, Melinda Holly, who's a longtime hobby player, uh, played at uh, Weasel Mood one time, which is the Chicago tournament. In Germany, we have uh, a hobby, uh, let's say, entertainment legend, John Jameson. Uh, in Germany, we can, uh, both of you guys will have a lot to say about him. Italy, we have Steve Cooley, who is also a longtime hobby player. Russia, Emmett Wainwright, and Turkey, Zach Rostros. Uh, hopefully I did that one justice. Let's see, Siobhan, what, uh, what jumps out at you here? Um, there's a lot of fairly standard stuff here. The only thing that really jumps out is there's a lack of a bounce in Galicia. Um, but Paris to Burgundy, fine. Munich to Ruhr, fine. Venice to Tyrolia, like you said earlier, very standard in the hobby right now. England did go to the channel, so somebody's listening to Chris Martin. Got a lot of channel openings already. Yeah. In fact, more than uh, Venice, uh, yeah. Venice and Galicia, right? Yeah. yeah. So, All I right. mean, nothing too exciting from my book, but... Yeah, an opportunity for Russia to go north, and uh, they hold in Warsaw instead, and, mm -hmm. and rather in Moscow, and, and, and yeah, and hold in Warsaw. Uh, with the negotiated DMZ, they were like, yeah, okay, could go north, don't want to go north. And it would have been a prime opportunity with England going to the channel. So uh, an interesting decision by Russia there. And a potential yeah. significant loss in unit efficiency um, is, uh, is your implication here, right? Yeah, well, it's more taking more of a wait and see approach uh, mm -hmm. is what's going on there. What I'm interested in is what the Italian army in Trulli will do. Mm -hmm. will, uh, will it get support as a unit from France? That'd be fun. That would be fun. All right, we will see. Very good. All right, so when uh, you get to we get to do the fall here. Yeah, so I mean, as I recall, the only interesting thing about spring was that there was no bounce in Galicia, so everybody wants Russia to have Romania, take Black Sea from Turkey, fine. Um, the move to Serbia as Turkey, why? Seems unnecessary, but convoy to Tunis and convoy to Norway. Okay. Um, we'll see how it plays. And guessing wrong, France guessing wrong over, uh, yeah, over that's the rough, but all right, Chris, you got builds in spring. Okay. Army in the Southern fleet. I like that from France. Pretty reasonable. Um, it's a, it's a sucky position for France is what I'm going to say, because picking up Spain now is super awkward. Um, Germany goes army, army says Russia, let's go together. Russia says, fleet take beat North Coast. Germany, where's your fleet? Um, Austria goes army, army, um, and the fleet and con. Pretty, pretty non-remarkable there, except for the fleet St. Pete North Coast. All right, let's bring this. Oh, wow, nice. What did Denmark do there? Looks like Denmark tried to support the move to Norway instead of just- um, Denmark, of yeah. Uh, um, cutting North Sea, which would have made it work. Um, English Channel just holds. 
Oh, France takes Belgium, but Germany walks into Burgundy, and now we'll take her. Uh, <laughs> as a force. And he'll take Belgium as a force. Yeah. Probably might have to put England in. I don't know if I'm Germany. Germany is John Jameson? No, he'll take them all. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Turkey does what Turkey can, which is not much when Russia is also attacking you. Mm -hmm. uh, getting Bulgaria blown up. So looking good for Austria, looking bad for France. Yep. And in the fall, we have in the West, um, England looks, uh, Germany is the one who takes uh, Belgium as predicted. And he bypasses Paris for the position. That what? mistake. Yes. Oh, wow. <sighs> Yeah. It may, may, turn, may not turn out to be a mistake, but um, well, it has to be a mistake, doesn't it? I mean, he's, he's pissed off France and Germ and England here, so yeah. his own yeah. he needs pace. He has to he has to cut their and, and bleed them as quickly as possible. Considering um, that he's at Belgium and Paris, um, yeah, and that France mm -hmm. has got a re not not only does France pick up one, but gets a rebuild. France on one, two, three, four, five. France builds two here. Welcome to two new French armies, Germany. Yeah, this is, That's this is not, this is not yeah. good for... Uh, the Italian yeah. move to Trieste was agreed upon. Yeah. Oh, okay. upon. Steve Cooley's not just walking in there to one dot. Yeah, All right. Yep. Let us go to... Uh, Siobhan, you're up for 1902. Okay, um, yeah, two French armies as predicted, um, a German fleet. Yep. Okay, yeah, and yeah, Fleet Naples, which is, yeah, I take Trieste, so I get the build, which we need more is Steve's pitch. Yep. Yeah, this build has, is a Mia Culpa, right? Like, oops, I didn't yep. realize you were gonna, <laughs> you were gonna get. My bad, I didn't count. Oh, I'm just like, like, I'm attacking England and France, I'm gonna need at least one more fleet. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's North so that he could take Belgium. Yeah, yeah, he didn't just zero dot France, he negative two dot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. All right. Um, so yeah, as Germany tries to say, okay, my bad. Um, let me run away from you now. Um, moves into slightly different positioning. Um, the convoy of Bulgaria to Smyrna. Love it. Dig it. Dig it. Love it. Okay. Um, Turkey does get Bulgaria as a result. But it's but, eh. Um Yeah, well played on that convoy, Steve and George. That's And France takes the channel. And this is an interesting lack of trust, right, between uh, Austria and Italy. So. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then follow the three. Uh, Chris, <laughs> you're up. takes Paris. Yeah. Sorry. After John signaling that he's walking back, uh, France convoys to London and takes it, loses Paris. Uh, hilarious. England also loses Norway there uh, as Germany picks up Sweden. Um, wow. There's a whole lot going on there. Um, looks like Austria picks up Bulgaria. Uh, yeah. and, and has a place to build. Oh, yeah, okay. Here. There's Vienna for the build. Yeah, yeah, uh, super. You know what? Germany can get away with this sometimes. Lie to everybody, play super aggressive, get people thinking they're going to work with you. When he sent those two armies out of France, you know, I'm betting the one that thought, okay, John has seen the light. He can't possibly be attacking both of us at the same time. Uh, she pivots. She doesn't cover Paris. Hey, London, she could have taken London with the fleet. She yep. could have you know, uncovered Paris, but instead she yep. decided to, to be more aggressive and move to the Western Med. Seems like yep. Yeah, super optimistic. And Tunis runs away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this was also a conservative play here, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. No reason for not to go back to Gascony there. No reason. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, I guess I know I lie. If you look at that, he had a supported attack on Marseille. You know. No, he did. It, yeah, it's not that there was no reason. It's more that um, it's conservative. Um, yeah. So. And I mean, conservative at a time when, you know, it's also combining with uh, Paris to Brest here. I think if I'm doing this, I'm absolutely, <laughs> John. I'm absolutely going to Gascony here. All right. Uh, all right so we have, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we just this one down. So uh, here we have 
Why doesn't Germany put any units down here? This must be a misorder. Six, seven. Germany's at eight and should be putting two down here. Picked up Sweden and uh, Paris. Not impossible. He waved a build. Waved but two? Uh, NMR. After Maybe an NMR yeah. on the build. NMR, yeah. On the timer. Right. He did say it gets better <laughs> in the yeah. comments here. <laughs> This is curious. This is a very this is a curious move. I would think Paris to Gascony if you're continuing anti France, but France is, doesn't seem like they think it's anti uh, yeah. that they need to fight Germany here. So negotiate. Said, look, I'll wave my bills and walk out. Clearly, we can't be doing this. So it'll be interesting to hear from John after the game, not now, mm -hmm. but after. You know, the game. What it is, he's channeling Chris Brand. This is <laughs> yeah, Chris so. Brand level of play here. Maybe so, um, but clearly uh, says not a missed order. Backstabber did not let him build. Ah, he did. Uh, I do remember him trying to get some attention here, saying that for some reason it did not show him as having the option to build because uh, he was set to surrender in the draft. Uh, <laughs> well, fair enough. <laughs> so, well, that's a, thank you very John, John for being patient with that. That's one of those things that is super hard to anticipate and warn people of in advance. I, I hope it doesn't result in you being brutally eliminated here. But let's go. <laughs> or yeah, brutalized but not eliminated. I think that's okay. the same thing. Uh, all right, so anything else going on here? We've got um, it, uh, Turkey with EMR, but really nothing left to do anyway. And of note here is um, Austria, Russia, and uh, Italy apparently working together uh, to combat Eastern uh, powers, especially Germany. Uh, yeah, this is the, we're going to eliminate Turkey, and Turkey's like, you know what? Screw all y'all. I'm not even bothered writing orders. Yeah. yeah. All right, Siobhan, you're up here. Okay. Um, okay, France takes Paris back. Fine. Um, lose, Germany loses Munich. Yeah, lack of those two builds is really hurting right now. Um, loses Sweden, loses Munich, loses Paris. Oh, John. And uh, Melinda is just chugging along. That's beautiful. Great turn for, for France. Um, she picks up two <laughs> dots. But Italy, only has... dot, Italy uh, is... It's in Italy, Russia uh, is what's going on here. Yeah. That's hilarious, except Russia is not helping. No. Um... All right. Um, so France had two builds, but only one spot open. Yep. Um, uh, all right. So now Germany, uh, from a seemingly uh, you know high perch, has fallen very quickly. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, shall we? Um, I, we've been keeping up a fast pace here for the last hour or so. I say we uh, change things up. Um, we've got a guest in the in the waiting room. Okay. Um, let's bring him on. Uh, I'm going to let you guys do do a little interviewing with him. I step away for uh, just a couple minutes. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you guys can take breaks. So Randy is in a game that's already finished. We um, That was in uh, Catawba's. So I think what we should do is you guys should ch chat with him for a little bit. No spoilers. And then uh, then when I come back, we can go through the rest of the game with him um, yeah. and uh, and just get his firsthand commentary. So uh, here, I'll give you guys uh, two or three minutes. Um, let's bring on Randy Lawrence first. Hey, Randy, welcome. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? All right. I'll step away, and you guys have a all right. Okay. I guess the first thing that I'm curious about is how you felt the game worked in this kind of hybrid format. Frankly, better than I thought it was going to. Um, I was going into it fully prepared for to 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 miss messages or uh, to like have be really slow in responding or have a lot of things happening once, not be able to keep track of it. But uh, at least on our board, everyone pretty much defaulted to using Teams to message. Uh, which was way easier than the backstabber because we didn't have to click hit, click hitting refresh on the backstabber. So messages were coming through quickly. Had a couple of video chats and voice chats with people. It was actually relatively painless. Found myself with plenty of time during the turns. I could walk away from the board, come back, and not not really miss anything. Honestly, faster than in person because in person you have to like walk from place to place where I didn't have to move at all, which was my favorite way to play diplomacy. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, okay. So do you oh. think then you might do this for Boston? I think it's definitely possible, although it's obviously a lot easier to participate as a player than to run this. I can't imagine the amount of work going on behind the scenes to make this happen. Uh, but seeing how well it worked as a player is def definitely making me thinking, all right, so if if 
if the players like it, which they clearly do, then uh, it behooves me as the director to see if I can I can find a way to make it work. So uh, right now I'm leaning towards, yeah, we're going to try to do this for, for Massacre. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the big things to take away from this event is one, um, people are loving it, but there's a huge amount of support in the hobby from other TDs and other organizers that they're willing to give. David Hood is one of the hardest working people in this hobby, but he, he himself could not have done this alone. So let's give a major shout out to everyone behind the scenes whose names we're not hearing because y'all are awesome. Yeah. Everybody, uh, Michael and Corey and Mitch and all of the replacement players. Yeah. <laughs> 